is well. Nothing missing and nothing broken. He is a good God. Mighty, mighty, mighty good God. You, you, may, not, you may not think so, but uh, here you are, still breathing and still alive and still thinking about, well, what am I going to do and that kind of stuff. Well, he, he, you know, he got you. He got you. He already done it. All right. God already done it. Uh, he, he's not going to be inventing anything new for you. Oh, he already done it. So you just, you just need to um, understand that and believe that and grab hold of it and don't let go because God already done it. He ain't, he ain't trying to do nothing new. He already done it. You and I ought to come to that place and understand it. Uh, to know that God already already done, he's already done, and he got you, all right? And so, therefore, rejoice in him um, and be glad in him, amen? All right. Um, today, I want us to talk about something that I believe will be a blessing to you and somebody. Please do us all a favor. As we do here, we share, because sharing is a blessing. Sharing is a blessing. And so share the broadcast to somebody to be a blessing to somebody because it's a blessed message. Okay? All right. I want to talk to you today about the fact that um, Christianity, as we all know it, <clears throat> is not a state of bondage. Christianity is not a state of bondage. As a matter of fact, it has nothing to do uh, with control. It has nothing to do with fear, and it has nothing to do with money. Christianity has nothing to do with that. If you truly understand it, and the author of, of, of it, eh, if you understand and know who the author is, you will, you will come to know that it is not all about what man has made it to look like. Okay? It's not so. And so let me start from the top coming down to let you know, first of all, that Christianity is not about, about, about control. But here we see that there are those who want to put people in control. They want to control you by the way you think, the way you do, and live your life. But Christianity is really about freedom. Salvation has come. Salvation has come. Jesus has brought us that. And we ought to understand, grab hold of it, and live and rejoice in it. Christianity, again, is not control. But you see, when you are, you are asked to do and continue to do, you find yourself in a state of control. Mm -hmm. You find in a, yourself in a state of control. You can you can predict what is next. You can predict what is next, and that is not so. It it does not give you or put you in a state of the actual work of and the finished work of Jesus Christ. Okay, it does not. When you find yourself in a place where you are constantly asked to do repeated stuff you should know that you are not fulfilling the finished work of jesus christ and that is a place you need to look at it's very important so today i want to talk to you about that all right and uh, look at a scripture or two to you know we got to get there so i want you to grab hold of your of your bible grab hold of your notepads and pens and make sure that you are taking this information down. But above all, you have to be free. You have to just get yourself out of that environment of control. Get yourself out of it. All right? It, it's, it's not a place that Jesus, you know, cultivated for you and for me. Um, many, many, many years ago, um, a preacher sat in my office um, and, 
in, in conversation, <clears throat> excuse me, said that um, if you don't if you don't scare the people, they will not come and they will not give. Wow. That was the first time I, I heard something like this. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought God is not giving us the spirit of fear. So if God is not giving us a spirit of fear, why do you want to put fear in the people? Oh, his answer was, well, you don't understand. And of course, I, I wasn't considered or considered myself even a pastor or a preacher then. And so, you know, knew this person, knew this um, preacher that I, I supported, I was supporting all the time and all that. But when he said that, I thought, hmm, that's kind of interesting because I thought Christianity um, is more of our freedom in Christ Jesus. And so therefore, therefore, what, what, is, what, what, what is this, you know, statement? That if you, if you don't scare the people, they will not come to church and they will not give. So is it about, is it about grouping the people under in the same room and recycling, you know, all the time? Or, and, and, and is it about, the, you know, the money that they have to give? I, I thought that was kind of strange, honestly. And I've, that thing has been with me for years, all these years. And, and I, I see that people are still, are still in, that, in that place of bondage. It's a state of bondage. When you have to put fear in people for them to believe God. That is a state of bondage. That's nothing, nothing compared to what Jesus, that was and that Jesus came to redeem us from. So Jesus has come to redeem us. Okay? Christianity is our redemption from that state of religious bondage. Christianity is not about finding ourselves in a bondage and trying to work, you know, fight wars in, in that state of bondage. Christianity is about what Christ Jesus has done for us, moving us and taking us of that state of bondage into God's freedom and of light, you see. And so when, when I had that, that thing as Hans has always been with me that one minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I say what a minute? Yeah, I was talking some language. What a minute. Wait a minute. Why do you have to put fear in people for them to worship God? Why? Why you have to give some scary things? Why do you have to tell some scary stories or give some scary atmospheres? And it has to do with, you know, um, a demon or, or some kind of a witch or some kind of a wizard or some kind of something that is always scary and by end of the day it's about the 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 the, the one in bondage dishing out money to the benefit of who you see so that's not Christianity no that is not Christianity you know um, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8, um, the scripture tells us that there was a story in the, in, the, in the district of Samaria, in the district of Samaria, that there was a guy by the name of Simon, who actually people didn't even know that, you know, he was, he was using sorcery. And, and uh, <clears throat> people around there thought that he was a man of God. You see, he was a man of God. Putting the people under bondage based on whatever he was telling them and whatever they have to do, that kind of stuff. And they believe him. And they believe him to the level where they equated him to be a man of God. Think about that for a second. A sorcerer. Mm -hmm. That they, I mean, they put him in a level to a place of calling him and my, you, let, let me take you there. Come with me to the book of Acts chapter 8. You, you see what I'm talking about here. Very, very important. This, this, is, this, is, this is something that, you know, it's really dear to me. 
that I want you to know that Christianity is not about control. It's, <clears throat> excuse me. It's not about fear and it's not about money. I want you to know that Christianity is not about control. It's not about fear. It's not about money. Come with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. I want to show you what I was, I was telling you about here, about this guy by the name of Simon. Because, beloved, if every time you come into a Christian environment, it's all about you got to sow, you got to give, you got to give, you got to give, you got to do that. I mean, and I see somebody do this, and I see this, and I see that. And, 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 and somebody, you got to do this right away. You got to, I mean, when you are put in a state of urgency, huh? that you, see, you see what I'm doing? You know, urgency, urgency. Beloved, you need to put bricks on it right there. When you will feel, when you are put in the state of urgency, that means you are on, on, on that rope of yo-yo. Mm -hmm. On the rope of yo-yo, where you are manipulated, okay? You are scammed, and uh, because fear and all this is already put in you, and so before you 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 are if you are in a place where you don't you don't even think because your heart and mind is centered on that fear message and that fear information that you are receiving you see so you will never be free you will never be free to know and believe that Jesus is already done the head of all principalities of and powers the bible tells us amen now, look at Acts chapter 8. Um, this talks about when Philip um, went down to, and his guys went to Samaria, you know, to preach down there, preach Christ. Beloved, I want you to know something that is very, very important. When you are hearing a message that is not Christ-centered, be very careful. And if it's outside that and it has to be with, I see somebody chasing you i see somebody holding your tail i see this and i see this and i see that be very careful about that i don't know how many times jesus was was seeing things and telling people i see some demons behind you i see some you know some old lady with no teeth chasing you and i see a dog with a with a horns and all that i don't know how many times i see jesus was telling people that so be very careful Christianity is not control, and it's not about money, and it's not about fear. Here is the situation like that. Look at that, um, verse 5. Let's pick it up from verse 5. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Listen to what Philip came to talk to the people. You're not going to hear from me ever, ever. Those of you who have been following the, our ministry for I don't know how long. One of the re, one of one of the understanding I've come to grab, and I'm so comfortable about it. When many people are used to hearing, you know, this type of messages, and when they come to this one here and they don't hear that, they think we are not saying anything, and they leave. Beloved, if that's what you want, you don't need nobody to, to convince you with what you want to hear. Hear it yourself. Just look in the mirror and say those things to yourself. Okay? And hear it. But you're going to be hearing Christ. You know why? Because we are followers of Jesus Christ. We're not followers of tactics. We're not followers of fear. Jesus never put fear in us. Jesus never put us in control. And Jesus never pulled out no money business from us. And that's why we follow him because he set us free. Free indeed. Listen to what the scripture says. Whom the son sets free is free indeed. So may your prayer be, oh Lord Jesus set me free. <laughs> and may you receive that which he has done. He's already got it done. Amen. Now look at um, Acts chapter 8. Look at Acts chapter 8, verse um, verse 5 down. So then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ Jesus to them. 
And the multitude with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did by the power of Christ. Watch this. For unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice came out, out of many who were possessed and many who were, baptized, who were paralyzed, sorry, who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was a great joy in the city. Things were happening by preaching Christ Jesus. Beloved, that is where I want you to pay attention to. Jesus has come to set us free. There's freedom in Christ. Your freedom is in Christ Jesus. Whatever you are struggling with, I, cannot, I can tell you without any reservation that, that your freedom is in Christ Jesus. Man, I can give you some testimonies of mine. You, you will know what I'm talking about. But I want you to know that your freedom of what is entangled in you is in Christ Jesus. Don't fall for this, you know, this, this areas outside Christ. Because you'll be kept there for a long time. You'll be kept there, and it's a place of bondage. Now watch this now. Verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. Claiming he was someone great, or somebody who was great, to whom they all gave, they all gave attention from the least, to the greatest, saying, quote, this man is the, the great power of God. <laughs> this man is the great power of God. Can you even imagine that? A sorcerer. Hmm? But when they believed, watch this carefully, but when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. That is why I am not concerned about who came today and left yesterday. That's why I'm not concerned at all. Mm -mm. The message is and will always be centered on Jesus Christ. And above all, enjoying the Spirit of God, whom He has a Father concerning us that we are enjoying amen and so what and simon himself who believe that's you will you would definitely come to believe that the power uh, of of god is really at work you will come to believe that you will because it is not fake you cannot dilute it it's a matter of time. Simon himself who believed. And when he was himself baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had also received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Watch this carefully. When they came down and prayed for them when Peter and John came and, and prayed for them in Samaria that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Got to top up, top the ice cream on the pie. The Holy Spirit, glory be to God. That they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, watch verse 16, for as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they lay hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now watch something interesting here. Now Simon, this Simon guy, the old sorcerer, when he saw that through the laying on of the hands of the apostles, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. He offered them money. Remember, this is who he is. This is who he is. He offered them money. A guy who has come to believe and is even baptized. I question that he's believing and, and, and whatever he is. He, 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 he demonstrated over there. I really question it. Question that very, very much. 
that he offered them money. And this is what he said. Give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. Those who receive the Holy Spirit, they now offer no money. Beloved, it's not about money. Christianity is not about money. I don't, it, listen, I will stand anywhere and, 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 and not argue, but I'm going to challenge you by scripture. It's not about money. It's not about money. I've told people time and again, you want to give anything to this ministry, make sure your bills are already paid. Because you see, the only person who sacrifice, don't sacrifice nothing for us. We already been we already have our high priest who has sacrificed his life. That contains everything that we need. We already have Jesus. He already sacrificed his life. And in the life of Jesus, everything that needs to be sacrificed for us has been done. You don't need to sacrifice nothing. So the guy thought that he could give the disciples, I mean the apostles, Peter and John, money for the Holy Spirit. Just, just think about that. And this is what Peter said to him. But Peter said to him, quote, your money, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. The gift of God. And here, who is the gift of God here? Jesus. For God so loved you and me, he's, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe on him, you will not perish. Think about this statement. You will not perish. You will have everlasting life. Beloved, I, pre I, I, I present to you today, if you never heard that before, Christianity is not about money, it's not about fear, and it's not about control. I don't care what anybody want to say about it. It's up to you. If you want to be in that atmosphere, go right ahead. You have your, you have your choice. You have your will. But I want you to know that the free will of God has been given to you and me through Christ Jesus. Free. I'm not saying don't give, but give it freely, willingly, not under pressure, not under scare tactics. Scripture tells you and I that God loves, loves, I want you to underline love. God loves a cheerful, Giver, not a fearful giver. Not a fearful giver. <sighs> Beloved, Peter said to this guy, may your money perish with you. You know, I was telling a, a young, young preacher the other day that <laughs> I'm the last one that you think that you can, you can come and, you know, flaunt some money in front of me and think that I need to sugarcoat certain things because of your money. I'm the last one. Please. You, you got it wrong. No, you got it wrong. Mm -mm. I'm the last one. How much did you say you got? How, how much do you say you have? I'm the last one. You know why? Because Christianity is not about money. It's not about control. And it's not about fear. Your giving must be willingly and cheerfully. Willingly and cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver, not a fearful giver. But I want you to know today, I just came to talk to you about this, that your, you and I have been set free by the sacrifices of Christ Jesus. 
Come with me to the book of Colossians chapter, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Um, Colossians chapter 1. Apostle Paul said something to those in Colossians. And, and I love that. Um, let, Colossians chapter 1. Uh, let's pick it up from from verse nine, where he was he was um, uh, making this statement to them. For this reason, we also, since the day we had it, we do not cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge. Since we got a, we got a revelation, we have not stopped <laughs> telling this story that you may. Be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may have a walk worthy of Lord, worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. What verse 11 here? Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering. Did you get a revelation here? Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us. Please make a perfect note to this. God has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into kingdom, into the kingdom of the son of his love. Please make a good attention to this. Pay a close, close attention to this. God has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. For God so loved the world which you and I live in he gave his only begotten son. So don't tell me God don't love you and therefore you have to pay money for God to love you. Don't tell me God don't love you so therefore you have to pay money to get yourself out of darkness. That place of bondage where you are always told that you have to fight. You have to fight. You got to fight. You got to be. Beloved, the fight is already won. And you are still fighting with yourself. As a matter of fact, I have come to realize that you ain't fighting nobody. You are not fighting nobody when you are told to fight some demons. You are actually fighting yourself. You're fighting yourself. Because Jesus has already completed the fight. I know this is what probably you don't want to hear, but I, I am telling you that's what it is. Mm. Look at verse 13. Again, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. In whom we have redemption, get our revelation here, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. We have redemption. Redemption is come. Freedom is come. Now look at chapter chapter 2 and the 10th verse, and I'm going to let you go on this one. Let me take it out from verse 8 again. Beware therefore, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty words, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Hmm? For in him dwells in who in Christ dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. 
and you and me, you and me are complete in him. Hallelujah. Who is the head of all principality and power? Get that revelation here. You and me are complete in Christ. Christ Jesus, who is the head of all principality and power. So if we are complete in him, why do you find yourself in a state of bondage that you don't even know? Because you are constantly asked to do A, B, C, D, E, F, and all that just for you to be free. I'm done. He that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Mm -hmm. But I pray for you. I pray for you that you will have an ear to hear that has gone forth to let you know that Christianity is not about control, it's not about fear, and it's not about money. Christianity is not about CFM. <laughs> oh boy, isn't that funny? With that initials. Christianity is not all about that. And so I want you to I want you to know that. Amen. Well, let me send a shout of blessings to you out there. Tommy, where have you been? Show yourself up, all right? Blessings upon you and your house. Opa, it is well. I declare that in Jesus' name. Pastor Richard, Ghana, how are y'all doing over there? Sending a shout of blessings to all of you. Please share this broadcast. Be a blessing to somebody. Let somebody know that freedom has already come. It's already come. You know, it, it, it is sad when, you know, you are free, but you don't know. It, it is sad. It's really sad. It's sad that you are free, but you don't know. I, I, I read um, where, you know, in the 1800s when slavery was ended, you know, many, many, many years ago, when slavery was ended in the United States of America, some slaves did not know that you know, that, that, that thing was done. <laughs> Let me keep it this way. They didn't know that. They didn't know that. That slavery was, was already abolished. And so still living in that mindset, believe. You see, what, what you believe, you live. What you believe, you live. What you believe. So if you don't believe it, you're not going to live it. I'm not, I'm not living my life about some demons out there and some whatever. I used to when I didn't know that I that freedom has truly come. But when I came to that understanding, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Man, I, I've been enjoying my freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen. And it's so beautiful. It's such a beauty. It's such a beauty. So I, I want to leave you today, whoever is listening, that probably don't even see you because you did not click in, you know, for me to know that you're watching and listening. I want you to be in the know that freedom is come. Thank God for Jesus. And thank Jesus for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Who is with us. And live your life. Live that life of freedom, knowing that God loves you, and he, he loves you and I enough. And he sent Jesus to come and redeem us. Okay, our redemption is come. We just read that. Redemption is come. Okay, well, if you therefore have not received Jesus, as your Lord and your Savior, you need to do that. And you can be a partaker of the freedom by Christ Jesus. Okay? Without looking to your shoulders 
and see who's out there, who's chasing you, that kind of stuff. Man, that's not life. Mm -mm. No. So give your life to Jesus. All right? Give your life to Jesus and uh, make him your Lord and your Savior. Make him your Lord and your Savior. How do you do that? You receive him in your heart. You receive him in your heart. Apostle Paul, you know, made a, a statement uh, in the book of Romans, chapter 9 and 10. He says, uh, you, you believe in, in your heart, and then you make a confession of what you believe with your mouth. Okay, because with the heart one believes, and with the mouth confession is made, okay, of what you believe, and that is your salvation. I believe that I'm saved. So you receive him, that's what you do. You 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 say that which you believe. And so let's can I pray with you? Let's say let's say this and um, this short prayer. Believe in. And not just say say it after me, because I'm saying it. You believe it. The Lord Jesus, I thank you for this teaching and message. Forgive me of my sins. I open my heart and I welcome you into my heart and into my life. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. From this day forth, Jesus, baptize me with your spirit, the Holy Spirit, that I may know all that I need to know. And I thank you. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen. And amen. Listen, this is it. This is it. This is it. You don't need this. See, there's no mystery to this. And there's no magic to this. And so, you know, um, just live your life. Okay? But more importantly, make sure you get yourself the word of God. The Bible. We call it a Bible. I call it the manual for daily life and living. This is my manual. It directs me, guides me, and all that. So make sure you get your copy. If you don't have one or cannot find or afford one, make sure you will reach out to us. We'll send you one free of charge. Hmm? We'll send you a Bible free of charge wherever you are. And so make sure you get information connected to this ministry, how to reach out, uh, out to us, and um, it will be a, a blessing to you. Also, I want to encourage you, therefore, all right, go to the YouTube channel and subscribe. Patrick Quino Global Ministries or Patrick Quino Ministries and subscribe. It's free. It, it, it puts you in a place where you can get these messages and even more. All right? I want you to go to the, uh, also click on our website. Go to the website page of uh, this ministry. There's a lot of information there for you to see and to know. Get a little knowledge about who we are hmm? do that because i mean you you have to know you've got to know so ignorance is not good it's not a good thing so please that's a website information on your screen capture it screen save it and um check it out okay in there you you, you will get you know um joyce's book as well all right it's it's out there for you or for you to get it you can get it from amazon uh, books, Amazon books, or um, Barnes and Noble. Above all, you can also get it here. If you if you call us and contact us, we'll get a copy to you. The book is right there on your screen. All right, straight out of straight out of love. Very powerful, wonderful, beautiful book. The book is beautiful as the author. Uh huh. And so get your copy today, and um, share it. Okay, the holidays time, get a copy and share it with somebody. That's not, I mean, the best gift, you, I, to me, the best gift you can give anybody is a book of God, a book of love. Above all, God's word himself. And so do that. Well, that's all I have for you today. I, I, I pray that you will get hold of this message. Don't let it go. Enjoy your freedom in Christ Jesus. The, the days of bondage is over. You're already free. And if you didn't know that, I came to announce it. You are free. Be free indeed. Amen. As always, I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding. I'll see you soon. God bless you.